Hey, welcome back everyone. Today's Sunday, I don't generally do this Sunday, but the family went out for lunch and I'd rather play and sit in a flash shop somewhere. Especially on a beautiful day like this. So next to me here, this is, I got this last weekend, some of you would have seen, this is a Zetel 4911. These are made in the Czech Republic. Um, pretty, pretty rare sight here in Australia, I think. I haven't seen too many. I've actually got two here though. One's a 6911, one's, this is a 49. The other one's a bit, obviously a bit bigger. It's four cylinder, this is three. This here was parked in 1986. It was part of Bullens Animal World, or African Lion Safari here in Sydney. I said on the last video, for those of you who heard, what I said that it, it used to pull kids' rides around and that wasn't quite true. There was another tractor there, which was an international, done that. This one here used to mow the park and tow a trailer and just, just general like, cleaning bins and like, maintaining the park. So it's been in the area, I would imagine, most of its life. So it bought a lot of stuff in here. Quite damaged at the front there. I don't know if that's from pushing it round after its life at the park or whether something's all opening gates with it. I'm not sure. But it hasn't ran since. I haven't tried to spin it over, so you're going to see for the first time if it's locked along with me. So the back brakes are locked up. I do have a set of tyres for the back, but I'm not going to entertain any of that until I know it goes. That that exhaust stack was open the whole time. It's got a bend on it, but it still can get water in there. So. The back wheels are locked up, these have got dry brakes and they've got a plate covering on which has been missing so that would have had water in there and locked that up but again if it goes, I can sort that out. Today I thought we might try and give her a go, um, see if it's locked up, see if it spins, whatever the case is and if it does spin over, good chance it'll go. So. Just do a bit of a walk around of it, there's not a lot to show I mean. Just a screeny, sorry if it shakes. I don't know the year model, I'm not up on, this, on these tractors. And a fairly complicated thing compared to a, a Massey Ferguson of a similar size. That 6911 we used to slash with, it's got that many gear sticks on it. And you can see down there, try and point the camera down here for you. It's got all these, it's got PTO speeds, it's got high and low, it's got all sorts of things and one's got to be in gear, one's got to be out of gear. It's actually column shift on the, that's a gear stick there, exactly the same as the bigger one but just obviously smaller. So. Same thing to use, same features and everything but you can see the brakes, brakes in there, they're actually hydraulic on these, so a lot of the other old tractors are just a, a straight linkage off the pedal so you can see the brake band down through that hole there. Even the 69 we'll use them for the slashing, it's, it was the same. I just put a bit of rag on there because it would fill up with grass. And, and um, there's no way out for it, there's no, no hole underneath, only a drain plug. <laughs> the grass won't go through that. See the master cylinder here? That's, that's, well, that's the reservoir for it. It'll be down under there, again, not, not touching any of that until we know it's going to go or or I load it back up on the truck and they can take it for scrap. I'm, I'm not sure. To me, it's not worth putting a lot of effort in. It's not a, it's not a Massey Ferguson. It's not a, in which I've got plenty of other tractors to use. I probably won't get rid of it. I don't get rid of anything. But I just poke it under a tree somewhere. Don't know a lot else about it. Again, three cylinder. Looks like it's got separate heads like the other one. The other one actually did a Welsh plug. We've got Welsh plug between the heads. I had to pop one head off it once when we were using it. <coughs> Just put the same head gasket back on with some copper spray. It worked fine. That was years ago, still going now. Fine. They're not they're not near the tractor to use as a Massey Ferguson. They've got power steering, they've got all the all the good stuff on them, they're just just not simple. Not, I guess if you get used to them they are, but but the 6911 is a very, very powerful machine. It just it's pulled so hard. And I'd imagine this will too for its size. The chances of it spinning over are very, very slim. I'd imagine that that didn't have a cover over it. The snorkel here has only got, well, whatever you'd call that, but that bolt going through there. Easy catch water on that. 37 years ago, whatever, wherever it was, it 
enough time for it to fill up, that's for sure, and take effect. So, but I thought it was worth saving, and I know a lot of you mentioned the 6911 in the in the Sami video I did, so I thought I'd save it. And I'm into tractors as much as any of you, so set this up and try and see if she spins over and, and go from there. Actually, I'll show you the tag here. Cedar Australia. I'm not sure it's given me a, a year model there. <coughs> Comment down below for those of you who know. I'd, I'd imagine mid 70s. It's come from Melbourne, I'd say. Whether that, they assembled them there or they imported them whole, and that was the, that was the dealership. I'm not sure. But to start with, I'll grab the fan. See if she spins. If not, we might knock that inspection cover off the side of the clutch and see if we can get a bar in there and go from there. Alright, so I've made sure she's out of gear. I grab that fan, the belt's still tight, and we'll see what happens. But there's a lot of stuff built up around the bottom pulley too, so that it could be, even if it's stuck, it could be anything. It could be the could be this compressor here, it could be a pump, it could be injector pump, it could be anything. We'll see. Oh, no, I'm bending the blade. Oh dear. Oh, she's tight there. Can't really get a bar on the front of that. I'll knock this inspection cover off and we'll go in through the side of her there. Alright, it's got a 10mm non fit here. cover off and see if the rats have been in here like they have on the top of the engine. She looks fairly complicated in there too. Um, that'll be our flywheel, you can see here. Just try and get a bar under the side of the case there and lever her up, see if she spins. I just said that there's a compressor. I've never really thought about what that actually does on this, is it doesn't need air, but let's just, just feed in the positive charge crankcase pressure or something like that. Get rid of the fumes, I don't know. It's sucking in clean air out of the air filter and putting it back in through this this here so I have to read up on what that actually does. I haven't seen it on anything else that I've ever played with anyway. That's actually spinning very easy. That's spinning very easy. I think the bloody water pump's locked up. I think that's what's wrong with it. And there's, a, there's actually a, a cap there full of grease that you wouldn't think unless that run out when it was actually being used. You just give them a, a nip every now and then to charge it with grease. And you pre-pack them and just wind it in every now and then. But that crank is spinning extremely easy as you can see here. The fan's not there. Or the belt. So we might just cut that belt off. And, couple of big bloody cat batteries there on the on the ute I might just sit next to her and see what happens. I'm excited now. Very excited. Okay. Let's pull those leads out and run them down to the ground and we'll give her a quick go. It's got oil in it. The oil I checked that off camera. It's exactly right so to me that means it hasn't got a sump full of water or anything unless it was down on oil and the water's brought it back up to level which I highly doubt it because it, you would think that it would keep rising so hook the battery up see if she spins and um, and then we'll, we'll try and prime her and make sure it's got oil pressure and everything and see what happens before we go any further I'll 
let you know, some of these may see my community post that we've got merchandise in now. Fairly basic shirt, just with the uh, Steve's Place Down Under logo. They're not overly expensive, I'm not making much out of them at all. If they sell. I've sold quite a few actually, but just, just to friends around the area, which is great. Very appreciative of that. It's more just to get it out there and get it advertised. Um, not a money making thing by any means, just someone sees it, asks about it, that's might have a look, you know, so. but it's got the thing on the back, we've got these, this is navy blue, even though it looks black, we've got black, I've only got it in large and extra large at the moment, it's so expensive, and just, just to see how they fit, it's fairly common sizes, we've got hoodies as well, we've got trucker caps, normal caps, and stickers of various sizes, some for windows, some for little white background ones for whatever, so. If anyone's interested in that, the, the link will be in the description. I think that's where we're putting it. And um, that'd be very much appreciative. Again, there's not a lot of stock. I think we've sold a lot of it already, but the orders are still coming in slowly. So if they if they do become popular, there'll be there'll be more of it. Just going to back this alternator off rather than cut the belt. I might be able to reuse it. It won't be won't be the best. Sorry, I'm trying to do this through the camera screen. Might be the might be the best quality of belts after it's sat for so long, but it, it'll do till we if the water pump frees up just to get it going and I can get a size and everything off it. So let's see. I'll need a socket for that one. Back to oh man, I forgot to run down, but she's Basic tools down here in the bush. Got a basic set on there, but I've got a set in my workshop and I've got a set at the my actual job, so I don't know how many toolkits I can have, but it's just a basic thing I've made up out of bits and pieces, but it's enough to get me by. Let's put the camera down to do this. Okay. So that should be loose now, but she's obviously still stuck on the stuck in them pulleys. I think that motor just spun just bloody pulling that belt then so she, she might be might have gone the other way rooted that way too but we'll see I need to employ someone to video me so you can see everything I'm trying to do it all one handed so I can share it with you all but it's hard Rat certainly enjoyed her over the over the last 30 years. That engine's spinning nearly too easy. She's spinning just when we're pulling that belt like starting a bloody chainsaw. There, so there, I, I was judging the engine by it's just the water pump's locked up. Chase one of them if she fires, so alright. I might put a mask on and blast a bit of this bloody ratchet off her actually. Or something, a bit of cloth over my mouth or down the back here and 
don't fancy breathing any of that in really. Probably gonna need to pop them covers off too, see what valves are stuck. Just had to go back up the shed and get some petrol for the air compressor so we can blow all that off. And while I was up there, like it's I hear something in the fridge. Sort of knocking on the door and I put my hand in there was the, I found these. Quite a few in there actually, and being lunchtime. Thought I might have a brown sandwich. So we'll start the air compressor up, blow all the top of it down, and then I'll take those covers off because it's spinning that easy. There's got to be a valve, but I think they're all open. There's no compression at all, so. See, see, see if any are stuck, or I'd imagine they would be after all this time. Get the job. Certainly a lot better, anyhow. I will just pop these covers off quickly. Wouldn't hurt to oil them anyway, even if they are all right. So. If any tool shop blokes are out there listening and interesting and donating a basic set of tools for a wrap each episode, I'm definitely keen on talking to you. I'm using all these non-fits and bits and pieces left over out of other kits of years gone by, but they do the job, I guess. Certainly haven't got the money to buy another set for the shed, so that would be amazing. She is. And she's fairly gummed up. I don't think oil changes were high on the agenda at the that particular establishment. But that one's either stuck down or it's way out of adjustment, push rods bent, something like that. But we'll find out in a second.
bloody hot here today on this beautiful Sunday. I actually behaved myself last night, so I'm in a feel a bit different than I usually do on a Sunday. Okay. The clearance is right out the buggery. That's got none at all. Saved up on the lobe that one. Definitely still lubricated up there. They can see that shit oil just turned to muck. And um, basically kept the moisture out of there. But look at it, there's no rust at all visible. I might sit one of them big batteries next to her. Run a wire up here somewhere where I can keep it. I wouldn't imagine the key would work. The dash has been open for 37 years. I'll just give the starter a bump and see where we're at for those valves. Just giving those old battery terminals a Bit of a rub up with the paper, sandpaper. See how they go. It doesn't look like they conduct electricity anymore to me, but they're all still tight, so it shouldn't have rusted where they are clamped. Just give her a wires hanging off her ear everywhere. I can see the trigger wire down in there. I'll just give her a quick go with the screwdriver here. Oh! First time in since 1986, you've all heard it with me. Listen to that. Oh. Yeah, calls for another, another brown sandwich, I think. She sounds just like the four cylinder over, exactly the same. Winding over like that, it's just fantastic. I really get excited over this sort of shit. I don't think they have much of a service program up there yet. It's more about the animals, which is good. Great, actually. I'll, um, I'm not going to change the oil in this one until, until it does fire. I'm not wasting 100 bucks worth of oil in. I know I'll get comments about that, but I'd rather start it and see if it has pressure. It's actually it's still liquid in the sump as, as hard as it looks up in the covers there, so it's still liquid in the sump and I'm going to start and see if it has pressure, I'd rather drop it when it's a bit warmer and flush all the shit out, so save those comments, I'm not interested. I do get that on a lot of first starts I do and I'm not, and a lot of first starts sit there again for the time they have been sitting to start with, I'm not spending all that money on oil and filters. If I'm going to use it like I would, would with this one if she went, absolutely, no problem at all. So I'll just get a wire up here. Actually, I might try and see the, if the key works while we're here. While we're here. Oh, I don't know. That won't even turn off. I'm afraid if I get that to turn, she might bloody... No, oh, it is, but it's... Oh! Yeah. <laughs> She's even working off the button here, look. Look at that. Fucking brand new shit doesn't work like that. Alright, well I'm going to get another cold snack real quick. Celebrate the, the spinning over of her. And then um, we'll run through these valves. I'll do it while I'm having it. Actually, I'll sit her here somewhere. Only having a couple of mid strengths being Sunday, I leave about quarter past four every morning, so I don't like like um, filling up too much if, if we've got to be responsible the next day. <sighs> OK. 
Okay, so. Push rod doesn't appear, Ben, I can spin it. Oh, I, would, I would say they're all returning because when you spin it with the starter, it sounds like it's got plenty of compression. I would say they're just out of adjustment. I will give them a go. I'm going to I'll run over them. Let's see if I've got filler gauges in this ute, actually. I don't have any in the car. I was just going to set them up, basically give them a bit of a Caterpillar standard, 0 0.38, 0 0.76. I was just going to run that on them. And, um, but, I mean, they're still opening. It'll still run like that, just when we don't need it to perform today. More clearance is better than being tight anyway, so I'm going to leave that off when we do run it just to see if she's getting it up there. I might, uh, so we've got to check the fuel system. I can see a problem with it already. A bit of a hose rotted out from the tank to the lift pump. And we're gonna to have to check if it's actually got all the pressure. I might, I do have a gauge somewhere. I think it's still on the forklift that I got going up there. I didn't have a hose on it, so I screwed it straight in the block and it's still there. I've just cracked the oil filler, I haven't got a gauge, but as long as she's pumping there, it's going to be good enough for me until I actually get it going properly, but that should start leaking if it's, if it is going to have oil pressure, I just cracked that off camera, but haven't yet wound it, so we'll see what happens here. Look at that. I think that's going to make me have another cold snack. Fucking on fitty. I can't believe parked in 1986 of nothing over that. That's not completely just rotten, just solid. Look at that. 90 degree there, but is, if, how much rain would have gotten there over the years, for God's sake. It's been like we just bought her. Alright, it's got oil pressure, so we're going to stuff around with the fuel system now. I haven't even had that tank cap off. I'll tip a bit in that, you see the rotten hose here between the tank and the lift pump. The, the, the actual fuel cock just opened, the tap there. It just pulled straight open. Um, which is great. That may, oh no, that may not work either. That's split there. So we can just do the outer coating, but it's actually rooted. So I may have to go back up the shed to get something like that. Um, in that case, I might even get some feeler gauges, just run over her. I reckon that'll be seized. I can try some pliers on it, some spray, see what happens. I won't check the filters. Um, I don't want to damage any seals because I certainly wouldn't have them if, if, if I were to wreck them. I'll just bleed her up and like, flush the tank, bleed her up. It's got a little trap here, but that was half hanging off, so that's got a gauze in it. And I'll just spray all that, blow it all out and clean it up. And I might take the side cover off the injector pump, put a bit of spray in there. <coughs> spray the rack, make sure she's not stuck open. And we'll try and bleed her up. And See where all the smoke is. Have to take that off. They've got a hand throttle on the steering column, but that's seized. That's that's copped a lot of rain over the last 
37 odd years. Um, I'll just take, take it off here so I can still control it. Yeah, I might disconnect the air filler. I don't know what that'll be like. I might pull that out. Tank there for the power steering. Check it. Um, yeah, I'll go and get some more fuel hose from the shed and I'll come back. Yeah, everyone, I'm back. I uh, just have to go up the shed and get some, get a bit of fuel hose. But thought I'd top that little bag up with cool snacks and um, I've got the feeler gauges too, so I might just run through these valves. I've generally got a bit of music playing. I just had bloody Ashton Gardner and Dyke doing the Resurrection Shuffle there in the Ute, and I like to turn it off because I keep getting copyright emails on the on the channel off YouTube. I generally perform a lot better when there's a bit of rock and roll in the background. It's not the case anymore. I'll just hit these. As I said, I'll set her up pretty much Caterpillar spec. Um, 0.38 and 0.76 and if it's not it, it'll be as close as shit is to swearing anyway. Just 0.381 there, that's perfect. And uh, 0.66, so I'll go, I'll just add another one to that. So for those of you who don't know, the smaller one will be on the inlet because it doesn't it doesn't heat up, the exhaust valve does. I mean, it will heat up with engine temp, but not, not, not like the exhaust valve will. Exhaust valve is a bigger clearance because as it gets hot, metal expands and that clearance will then, then become less when it's running. So Another way to tell, I haven't got a spec on this, I haven't Googled nothing on it, but um, another way to tell when, you, when you're doing these, the, the, if you don't know what's what, you'll see the manifolds will line up with, basically most engines will line up with, it's not a rule of thumb by any means, but it's a good way to tell line up with each valve, so inlet, exhaust, or whatever the case is on this particular one, so I would imagine this is the exhaust here, because it's closer than a cross flow head, if you've got the, if you got your ports on the same side, they will be, exhaust will line up there, then if the manifold was here for the inlet, it would line up with that, but you <coughs> basically know what I'm talking about if you were looking at that particular, but being cross flow, this is closer to that side, that valve. So they'd be inlet the shorter ones, the exhaust will be longer ones because they line up with the, the exhaust manifold here. So I um, do the do the exhaust on this one first. Point three eight there yeah, and point six six I need point Six six is probably enough on a machine like this. See how loose they still are. That's 0.6 mil, 25 thou. that under the exhaust. Again I don't think the valves are stuck down because that gap is across the board for one and two. When I, when I, when I wind her over it's definitely got bloody, sounds like she's chuffing out of, well not chuffing, it sounds like it's doing what it should out of, just from noise. So I'm just going to assume that what I've just told you is correct and this is the exhaust here, and closer to the manifold. Again, not a rule of thumb, but it's a good way of telling. If you picture the makings of the head, it makes sense. Just want a nice drag on that. Again, not a highly tuned engine, so that's Close enough on something like this is usually good enough. Again, looser is better in some circumstances, not everything. Probably some of you know what I mean there. Uh, 
We'll go 0.38 on the not Z to spec, so don't tell me that they're different because I, I assume they would be. And this is just what we set a normal C15 up, 3406, something like that, Caterpillar stuff. So, I mean, there's obviously a lot more the Caterpillar run, but it's a standard across most Earth, most earth moving machines. So, number one's obviously on compression now because both those valves are, are closed. There is a sequence for doing these, but the start is so easy to hit. I'm just going to go each head rather than rather than a sequence. So. This feeling when you're dragging the feeler goes through will change because of the gap in the thread there. That'll that'll lift up and it'll become a little bit looser, which it is there, but it's still fine. So now we're looking for these two to be open. They're all out the buggery. Bird life in the aeroplane. Aeroplanes are very noisy here today. It's an airport not far from us. There were a lot of a lot of training. When I say not far, it's 20, 20 minutes. Do a lot of training and Sunday flights and joy flights and stuff like that. You, you can obviously hear them in the background as the camera picks a lot of it up. All small aircraft. They, they do gliders out of there, tow gliders up in the air. They do a lot of flight school, stuff like that. Joy flights, as I said. Okay, that's nice. Get that inlet. Open. It would have run before, but as you can see, the maintenance wasn't wasn't priority. Might as well do them. We know that's right. If she's got a, if she starts misbehaving when we get her going, she's you know this part of it's right at least. This last head here. Alrighty. Now will be good enough. Close enough is good enough again with a low performance machine like this. It's fine. And then I mean those specs are surely more than suitable for this machine. So. Next we're gonna have a look at the fuel system. I've just gone and got a bit of pipe as I said, uh, sorry a bit of fuel hose. Clamps between two steel pipes. And now, take the cap off another beer as well as the fuel tank. So, just so while I've 
Well, I'm going to reposition the camera. I might not share with you what's actually in here. If it's rubbish, I'll have to hook her up to. Yeah, she's still got a bit in her. Actually, it's it's obviously blocked because that's probably there. And that fuel cock's open. We have to blow back into that with the air and then let it go into something. I've got a drum here somewhere. Some bloke got into me about priming the Volvo and letting the bloody... For those of you who seen this video, left quite a colourful comment here, which I was very amused by, by the, the diesel hitting the grass. And... and uh, he wasn't impressed at all. <laughs> Lucky you didn't see me drain the diffs in the hydraulic tank. Prick. So, that's probably going to happen again. I won't drain all that onto the grass. But... I'm not usually a fan of clearing a fuel tank and blowing it back into the tank. Like any of the earth movers at work, I generally take the, if, if they are blocked, we went through a state of them, 631 scrapers and and they were scrapers especially, a couple of, couple of old D400 uh, tick trucks, but we had a quick fill mob come through and they just blew a hole in the side of the tank with an oxy and welded a, like a bandmore fitting, quick release fitting into the fuel tank. And um, this is just an example, but they didn't clean none of that slag out. It was the roughest bloody thing I've ever seen. And when I was in field service for many years, we, uh, we were forever when we ran a fleet of, I think we had 12, 631 open bowlers at the time and they were forever breaking down these, the ones that that was done to anyway and um, used to just take it off of the tank and tie a rag or tape a rag over the, the fuel tank and go right up to the primary fuel filter and blow back through and basically one you're not putting it back into the tank and two you, you're catching it and there's evidence of, of um, of, of there actually being a blockage, so, but that was one particular machine. We were forever doing it. But this case here, I, I would say the blockage is in the actual tank. It would have been shit settled, so you're not going to really see. I think we blow it back through and it might, it might dissolve into the fuel or it might... Uh, just mix in with it and run back out, hopefully. But with fuel being in there, she's not going to be rusted anyway. Oh, fuck. Jeez, that sucked. Oh dear. Well, that's not good. I think what that's just done is... When I said it wasn't rusted, I think it is externally here and it's just blown a heap of water out. So the actual, I can't really tell, but it's got external rust on it. So that line's free, past the cock is free, and then it's bloody, then it's blocked, I'd say there's a layer of shit on the bottom and keeping that from flowing out. So that should be belting out now. Lucky it's not that bloke would have got back into me. So, to get this going now, I'm not going to worry about that. If it all performs well, I certainly will. I'll spend some more time and I might just go and get a hose and I've got a drum of diesel in the car there in the ute. I'll clamp a bit of hose to this and then we'll just prime her up from here. So I'll check from here on, it's good. And um, which it is. This little fucking fuel bowl out here, she's.
problem we're going to have is running it off a bottle. It's going to return too back to the tank, so it's going to suck the drum out quicker than it uses it and pump it back into this old tank. So we're going to have to resolve that too. Certainly not the end of the world, but um, it's another thing to overcome, I guess. It's only just in there. I could unclamp it and drop it back into the drum. I don't want to contaminate it. I'll probably run it onto the grass for that bloke. Until it's clear. Right, everyone. I just had to duck up the shed. I came back, and that hole had let go, and the fuel's now. It's mostly water anyway, it would have been three or four litres of fuel in there, but she's let go, I caught what I could, but here's what it is, mostly water. You can see it running down there. I had to go and get some more hose because you got the injector leak offline there, which went to the tank, and you've got the return from the injector pump itself, and you've got the pickup. So I've now got three hoses running to this fresh drum here. Off camera, <clears throat> I pulled the side cover off here, rack's all free, got control of it here, that's a bit tight, but she, she's moving the rack, and I pulled this off, and it actually primed up, um, it, it picked the fuel straight up, she's getting a bit of air in there through the top, top seal of that plunger, but I just cracked it here, off camera again, and it was it was built out of there, I might, I might just show you that, you can see that there, that's not a good sign you don't air anywhere near your fuel system but it's actually got good pressure there and that's getting hard so I think she's even starting if you can hear that she's starting to leak back I'll just pop that one return one out of there Let's see if we can see her I'll pump it Should be near leaking as she goes. Look at that. She should be. It's actually a valve in there. That keeps it. The pump keeps a keeps a head of pressure in there, and once it once it exceeds that, it leaks off back into the tank. So that's what it's actually doing there. I think once that once that once that's running, um, providing that's not stuck, which I, I doubt it would be, because it's in pretty good condition. That that other old girl up the shed, the '69, she leaks too. Um, leaks out of here when it's screwed down it doesn't though because she bottoms out here and seals off so providing that's not going to drag air in through there which said that becomes that's only part of the fuel system when you bleed it so then once you'll just run through there that's an actual pump itself running off a cam in that injector pump so I reckon what, what the next stage is is to tighten that and crack some of these lines while we hit that mighty button there and see what happens to her Actually got a motor mine on the way, he just rang, surprised me. Coming from, oh he's up in Queensland, he's down seeing his kids and he rang me up and he's generally got a few things like this in the back of his vehicle, he's got a bit of a handy fridge in there so probably be a few of them so we might have to halt recording here for a bit. Okay. I'm going to take this lift pump off just to see just hit her on camera and I thought I was recording so we had it by hand priming it but then we lost it when we let that go like it's um, like it's the uh, it pumps the only thing working and not the hand uh, the I'll just drop the pump off her and see if she's not stuck. I have had these stick in, like that run, as I said, runs off a cam on a wheel. And if they stick in, it certainly won't, won't um, work. They just push in and then don't return back on the lower side of the cam lobe. And big problems. So 
Someone must have got a new kit of copper or bloody fibre washers when they put it together last because they've gone overboard with a should only have one, they don't really seal with that many on them. But. So, put that back there so I'm not searching through the grass for a washer. Screwdriver in anyway. Try and drop her off. Might need a hex head as well. Might need something a bit better than a screwy. Yeah. Fuck. Extension quarter drive set maybe. Bit of a search through me non-fits here and reading on the injector pump there, it's made in Czechoslovakia too, they must, must have used all local stuff or which I mentioned that before, she's made in Czechoslovakia never heard of that brand but all made in house which is great, not by Zeta but by that country ok so that's not stuck but don't mean the valves aren't. I'm just thinking, I would say it's pulling air down through this. Yeah, it would be. I can, I can suck through that very easy. I might just try and put a bloody BSP plug in there with a bit of thread tape or something just, just to see what's going to happen. Then I'll, once she goes, I'll order bits and pieces for her. And, Okay, run on back. I just went up the shed to just fucking hopefully I brought it back down. The lift pump here. So the the the, hydro, the hand plunger was sucking air. I'll try and get it focus in here, just through where that is. So I've just put a, a quarter BSP fitting in there, and I blocked it off with some something out of a tube up there, whatever it was, some sealant and then just wrapped some tape around it just so it's not sucking air when it works I had a mate of mine call in as I said and he enjoys a snack Gavin, he, he, you know, I haven't seen him for a while so I had quite a few with him up there now we're back, it's about to storm, it's getting late here but still seems alright, my dad's just turned up he wants to see a start up too but for those of you who said I need a tilt tray when I when the, the, the saw the video of dropping this tractor off, I'm just while I've been working here, I've been thinking. I've got this old Mac here. She got the 237 in with the five speed. The chassis's rotten on it, but it's got all this. It's got a like a hook lift bin set up on it now it tilts up as well as a hydraulic cylinder that slides back and forth to winch the bin on now that's got big potential to make me own tilt tray I don't know about using this truck but if I could fit it onto something else all the workings are there all the hydraulics all the cylinders um, 
pretty over, overdone, but I'm not picking up anything heavy either, so if I had the time we could probably convert this into a tilt tray, but that, that tray sitting on there, just for storage, that's not how it'd be, but let me know your thoughts on that. I haven't got the time to do it, but if we can grow the channel, I'd, I'd certainly love to do something like that. So now we're going to put this lift pump back on, we're going to give her a go. So I'm going to bolt this back on. You can, you can see that's that's working fine. I think it was pulling air through that. So I'll bolt this back on. Put the fitting in the road. I have to use a spanner for that top bolt. Shit jammed in behind it. You can hear the valves are working, you can hear it creeping. You say you've got two tires? Yeah, I'm sure I have. Front ones are only off a of land cruise or something, unless we buy some. If it's all going to work, I'll put some money into it. Same track, huh? Same. Exactly the same, just small, yeah. It even sounds the same when you wind it over. Not much. Must have been a good motor when they parked already. Right? It was obviously going because it was a long time ago. That's the same tank and everything, right? Eh? Yeah. What was wrong with the pump? Oh, the lift pump, like the one up there does, it leaks through there yep. and it's pulling in air. I think that's what's wrong with it. Ten mil here. Put that fitting in there now. I can't get the screwdriver in. Australian right. made muffler. I'd like to rethink these. That's on the pressure side, so it won't really matter. There's too many fibre washers on there, but it was working, so I'll put it back like that. Bleeder with the starter motor now because the hand primer's not working properly. Probably only pull that apart and put new washers in it. Yeah, hand that's primer. right. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a checklist of Arkin bloody made, like they made everything over there. It's got the tag on there, which is strange to see. You wouldn't see that in all everything made in the one country. That's worn out there, but if I was oh, to the use other it, one don't work anyhow, no, it? it'd never bother me. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have to bleed it with the starter motor because I've got the primer here. As much as it works, I can suck air through that. And I um, don't want any air near a diesel system. So I'll just undo this here. See if she's going to work off the off, Start a button and off the button. engine now. Yeah, yeah, it works. 
Just push it down. I just want to see if it primes this fuel up. Somewhere. Looked like it was leaking around this friggin' plug here then. Those brakes are wide open on top there, too. Yeah, and their wheels are locked up on a. Oh, the half ends off up, is it? Yeah, that's because they're exposed there. But if it, oh, there are any if it was to go, I'd put the money and like the effort into it. Got a little sized tractor, eh? What are the, what's that about? Fifty? Four, nine? Oh, forty? I don't know. Forty, I don't know. Bigger than the thirty-five, isn't it? Have more grunt. No, forty-nine and mean fifty horsepower. I don't. Know. I don't I don't want any air in no. there. I think once the fuel's air it won't matter. I'll seal it a little bit. Good as it won't over sitting there that long. Unbelievable. I can't believe it. Nothing wrong with that pump, mate. Eh? No, but it draws air in there. See? Now that's air, I might knock it back off. Might run back too once you take that in. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> Hold my finger over it. Let's try there, just see if she's coming out the. <laughs> Pull it through, just hang on. It's just, it's just draining what's there. again. No. I don't think that pump's Just actually... leave that on. Pump that going. I don't think that pump's actually working. It's only... You had to pump off it, didn't you? What was wrong with it? Oh, it seemed to be working fine. It just it's coming out of the injectors and everything when I'm doing this. But... It's not on the other tractor that that pumps loose too, but it still works. Yeah, it does. Yeah, but it stops coming out of the injectors when you let it go. When you stop pumping that yourself, it, it 
stops. I don't know if it's that because you pressurise that and it won't leak. That'd be leaking if I did that, surely. Alright everyone, we might just run her off the hand pump. See if she bloody goes. It's I'll sit this back here on this truck now and so you can see the exhaust pipe and the smoke. I'll pump this and get her up with them injectors. Alright, alright. Yeah. Can't believe how long something's sitting. You got all them loose, have you? Okay, so it's now Monday. Obviously, we started it yesterday, Sunday afternoon. We were down here videoing it. But we got a result out of it, but the, as I turned around to do a walk around with the camera, I noted it was the said memory card was full. So after reviewing the footage last night, it wound, when we hit the starter, it wound over about three times, and then the camera just cut off. So I'd previously been videoing. Oh, we started up one of the Ford LNT Louisvilles, and that all that content was still on there. So. What I'm going to do is insert the, because I had the phone set up as well, so I did, I still caught what happened on the phone, so that was just standing upright, so you're going to see it down the middle of your TV, it's not going to be very good quality, it's only a short clip, but that's how it is, I'd rather show you what actually happened than try and restage it with, with the better camera, so pretty, pretty special thing when they start after that long, and I'd rather you look at that. This was parked in 1986 and sat in the weather the whole time. I haven't checked the air filter actually.
That sat in that paddock all that fucking time. That's a long time. <laughs> oh, there's nothing wrong with it. That's good stuff, isn't it? Look, that's, that's a good motor. Oh, fuck. An opening door. That was like that. Look at Okay, hopefully you're all still with me after that. Sorry it was low quality, but I'd rather show you what really happened than stage it and try and get a bit better quality. But don't let that turn you off this video because it's that that won't be happening often. I'm trying to improve quality, not 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 go backwards, but that's how it was. So if you still want to see the recovery of this vehicle and where it was sitting, I'll I'll insert a photo here of I'll show you where it was sitting before the excavator, as I said, everything was up there getting scrapped. So before the excavator pulled it out and cleared the area, I'll insert a photo here to show you where, where it was sitting. Then I'll, I'll, um, I'll put the description to the episode where we did recover it. So you just can have a look at that when we dragged it on. So it was pulled out of where it was with an excavator just so we could get to it. But I'll insert a photo so you can show where it really was. And, and it's always good to see how they've been sitting after all that time and, and what the result is at the end of the video. I've ordered a couple of bits and pieces when I got up the house last night off eBay just for the, the fuel system to try and keep that up. Maybe we can get it running off, even though it was running. I'd rather see it run. We can prime it and it's it's supplying its own fuel. And, and we'll run it for a bit longer and get the temperature up. We'll put some water in it. Even though the pump's not working, we'll get, we'll get longer out of it. It's got water in the block in the radiator, so... We'll run it for a bit longer and it's good to get an engine warmed up the temperature and cool it off again after it's sitting do that a few times and it's, it's pretty good for it so that'll be another video and then if it does run and behaves for that time we will we'll probably get it up the shed and pull the brakes off and try and free them up i've got a set of tires up in the or i hide all my spare parts up in the bush there and you can buy the brake wheel cylinders master cylinders they're fairly cheap talking maybe 300 bucks for the lot I thought it was pretty good it's worth that I've only I'm only into it 75 bucks at the moment for the fuel thing I bought off eBay the hand primer so I didn't get charged to pick it up he's a good mate of mine and help each other out that way so again I apologize but don't let that turn you off my videos because we will move forward from that I just I wanted to insert that and show you what really happened so Please share and subscribe. I know everyone asks this, but it will help me grow. A lot of you have asked me to start doing some of the trucks and like restore tractors, trucks, and but I can't. With the time I've got, I'm only really got Saturdays, and a lot of them are booked out too. So, but if we can get to the channel to a stage where I can maybe back off work a little bit and focus more on on this and. It will be a lot better content. I've got a lot of good trucks down here, if you've all seen. And I'd like to put 60% of them back on the road, at least get them going to a stage where we can do something with them anyway. And there's old tractors here. I want a lot of stuff you haven't seen going yet, a lot of stuff you haven't even seen yet. But again, please subscribe if, you, if you're still watching and you liked it. And, and thanks again for watching.